He sat down to write a poem. One about life and things. One that would tell and shriek and yell. One that would soar and sing. He would mention his mind and, and the trees and the sea. And his heart and his girl and their love. He defined what was good, what was bad, what was odd, and add a coda to God. So he thought and he pondered upon all these things till his being rumbled with fear. So he put down his pen, lit a cigarette, then ended his poem right here. Now, Bernard, Mr. Smith, how do you keep all them poems in your head straight like that? I mean, you've been going on like this for a couple hours. <laughs> Just a simple accident of nature, Mr. Cartwright. Like warts. <laughs> who, uh, who wrote this one? An ancient druid priest, name of Kaliwabbles, who was foully slain by a pack of rabid suffragettes. For the inner man. Neath the weeds and the wild berries, near the barren praying trees, past that gash of a road by my home, stood the deafness first strike you, friend? Look, mister, I've been putting up with your stuff for near an hour now. That's long enough, I'd say. Then you don't plan to cease playing that machine? No, I don't. In that case, I shall strike you so hard that you will have to remove your boots to brush your teeth. Here, have a drink.
in here? Here? Yeah. Oh, I just got a little food I'm taking out the barn. Has your horse developed a fondness for peach pie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, this ain't for my horse. It's, uh, it's for a fella I met in town. I... What, you put him up in the barn? Well, yeah, he was sort of sick, see, boy, and I... Of course, we always put sick people up in the barn. Well, he ain't exactly sick, you see. He, uh, he had a little too much to to eat. That said, he overate. He ah, ate yeah. too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why you're bringing him some more food. Ain't doing too well, Emma. Not so far. <clears throat> well, the truth of the matter is, Paul, he had a little too much to drink. Ah. Uh -huh. No, the truth of the matter is, he had a way too much to drink. He's drunk. Oh, I asked you, why do you always have to turn this place into a a home for grown-up foundlings. Well, Paul, I couldn't just leave him in town. Oh, of course you couldn't leave him in town. Anytime some fellow runs into town and gets himself roaring drunk, it becomes your responsibility. Right? Well, it does if I bought him some of it. Oh. Look, Paul, I was perfectly honest, and I, I just bought him a couple of drinks while he was reciting. While he was reciting? Well, he, he wasn't exactly reciting. He was... He is telling me what a good hand he was. That's what he's doing. Uh, and I remember you telling us that we needed a new hand. Oh, wait a minute. You didn't hire him. Well, Paul, he had, he had awful good references. Well, so far, the only references I've heard is that he gets drunk. Oh, horse. Oh, honestly, I... Well, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to try him out anyway. Well, I'll, uh, I'll just take this one out. There's one good thing about the whole situation, though. At least he's a ranch hand. He's not one of those other strays that you're always bringing home. Yeah. Oh, why, little Red Riding Hood, how kind of you not to forget your old granny. <laughs> There's some good chicken in here for you. You didn't bring a bottle? Look, Mr. Smith, we gotta sober you up. Why? Because you got a job here, that's why. I have a what? Well, you, you broke, you ain't got no money, so you must need a job. <laughs> I don't know how to do anything on a ranch. You learn. Why are you so interested in me? Well, I sort of... Back myself into a corner, I reckon. I'm sort of committed to you. What will I have to do? Well, the first thing you gotta do is sober up. Now, go and try some of that chicken. It's good. Anything to drink? Yep, sure have. Yeah. Assassin! <laughs>
Don't you know you can kill a man like that? Well, there's one thing for dang sure. Work ain't gonna kill you. I, uh... Oh, what happened was I, I had to move into the shade because I felt a sunstroke coming on. Yeah, I imagine a hundred-proof sunstroke must be pretty rough stuff. Now, look, we're not paying you to sleep, you know. Joe, you heard him. He said he felt a sunstroke coming on. What, you gonna believe that? Well, I don't see any reason why not to. Brother, remind me to talk to you about the Easter Bunny sometime. Uh, your faith in human nature is refreshing. Your uh, brother seemed to think I was lying. Come on, Will. Let's face it, let's be honest. You got a hangover that's longer than a 20-foot log on a 10-foot buckboard. Well, if you think that, well, why I'll did you... I'll tell you, my friend. I, I just got a feeling that somewhere mixed in with all that booze and baloney, there's a man. You're taking a lot for granted, aren't you? Maybe I am. Last night in the Silver Dollar Saloon, you were a man. Oh, you were all liquored up all right, but you knew what them words was about. You knew what they meant and why. So I figure somewhere in that frame there's enough of a man that it's worth the trouble. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Will. I'm going to sit down right over there, and I'm going to watch you chop that stump down to size if it takes all day and all night. Get to chopping. Come on. told me that the tree stumps on the Ponderosa were made out of stone. Better get a move on, Smith. That's supper. Uh, don't mention food to me. I'll eat your share. you limb from limb. Be reasonable, Draves. All I want is this little sip. That's all. Just a steady... That's my bottle. You took it from my saddlebag. Please, Draves. Hand it over, Smith.
Is this what you're looking for? That's mine, Mr. Cartwright. He took it from my saddlebag. Is that true? Well. Is it true? Yes! You be sure you're off the Ponderosa by morning. Boss. You don't know how bad it can get. Yeah. I reckon I don't will, but... I know how bad you can get now, don't I? of man. One rises from his chair and confirms the affirmation of... <laughs> well, if you would stop and think about it, you realize that there has to be a certain trust between human beings. No more credit. But in a healthy economy, there has to be a certain amount of give and take. All right. A poem, then. Now, that's another thing you and me better get straight. I heard enough of your poems to last me forever. But if you would just allow me to... Look, rum -bum, get out. I'm sick of you. No ape is going to dictate terms to me. <laughs> I'll funnel you with your hands your life. Take care of them. You go ahead with your laughing. Oh, well. oh. I'm not drunk, Hoss. I'm just dying. Some people refuse to accept the fact that the human brain was never meant to be pickled in alcohol. Yeah. He is going to be all right, though, ain't he, Doc? Man's got the constitution of a horse. And if he keeps on drinking, he'll have the lifespan of one also. Let's see. Oh, I'll need his name for the prescription. Yeah, it's Will Smith, I think. Not according to this. 
William Warlock Evans? Evans? Here's a letter addressed to him. From San Francisco, from a Mrs. Lydia Evans. They got to be his wife? That couldn't be the one that's a poet, could it? Oh, I never heard of him. William Warlock Evans is one of the most gifted young poets this country's got. Do you suppose that's him in there? You know, Doc, it just could be. As a matter of fact, I'll bet you it is. Damnation! Damnation! I'm stripped to the buff! Hey, Will. Come on. Hey, lay down, buddy. Hey. Relax, relax. Come on. Stop thrashing about here. Come on, relax. Lay down. Well. Lay down. Lay down, lay down and relax, buddy. Come stay on. Down. Come on. Uh, stay there. Where do you think I could go dressed like this? You're feeling busy? No, this is the way I always talk. Well, I've got some sad news for you, my friend. You're going to have to stop drinking. What did it take you all eight years of medical school to figure that out? Oh, so I'll leave Mr. Evans' prescription down with Matt Graber. All right. You can pick it up there. Yes, sir. Oh. You know, I always felt there was a certain resemblance between doctors and bartenders. They both strive to remove pain. Then they restore the agony with a bill. <laughs> Oh, if they were going to be fair about it. What did he call me? He called you Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans? What are you going to do? I don't know. I can tell you what I'd like to do. I'd... I'd like to take you back to the Ponderosa and dry you out. Why? I don't know. Maybe I'm a sucker, but I got a notion that a man like you is worth it. And as soon as we got you on your feet again, we can get a hold of your wife and get her out here. No! What do you think I'm running from? Look, I'd, I'd rather burn in hell through all eternity than to spend one second with that woman. Well, that's... That's sort of up to you, Will. Now, your father wouldn't take me back anyway. I'm a convicted thief, drawn and quartered. Yeah, but once he finds out who you are... No one is to know who I am. I mean that. I've carried the burden of being William Warlock Evans too long. Now, you still think you can get me that job back? I don't know. But we can try. Well, so far, you haven't given me one valid reason. Boy, I just think he needs help, that's all. No, he needs help, all right. I think we're all in agreement with that. Hoss, I, I don't want to appear hard. Oh, Paul, I know your point. But that Bernard, I got one, too. It, it, it's easy to explain as yours, but... Paul, if you'd have seen him out there today when I picked him up, you'd know what I was talking about. You want to hire him? All right. You hire him. You pay him. You'll be responsible for him. Yes, sir. He's out there in the bookhouse. I think I'll go tell him right now. The boy's just too easy going for his own good. I agree with you, Pye. You're absolutely right. He's got that silly notion about trying to help people. I just don't know where he gets it from.
Your food's getting cold. <laughs> it looks like wood. It feels like wood. <laughs> but it saws like iron. <laughs> Well, how am I doing, Professor? Well, I'll tell you, Will, you get a you get an A for effort. But I'll have to give you an F for results. Let me show you something. Here. Don't fight it so. Don't use just your arms. Get your whole body in. Get you a nice rubber. Look at that. Well, I admit it's worked so far, but I don't think that two weeks is going to change Will all that much. You said yourself that he's packing his share of the load now, Paul. Well, sure, that's because he doesn't stop to quote poetry every time a leaf falls off a tree. Yeah, I don't know if that's altogether good either. Well, I'll tell Charlie we'll pick the rest of this stuff up next week. Yeah, all right. Are you Mr. Ben Cartwright? Yes, ma'am. Can I help you? I am Mrs. William Evans. I've been making inquiries, and I have reason to believe that my husband is one of your employees. Evans. William Evans. Well, ma'am, we have a... we have a, a William Smith, and a, we have a, a Bill Perkins. And Paul, it's Will Smith that you're talking about. Ma'am, I'm... I'm horse cart right. And Will is out on the Ponderosa, yes. Will Smith is really William Warlock Evans, Paul. The poet? I... I, th I thought he was dead. He is. In more ways than you can imagine, you tell Will that the game's over. I found him. I'm at the hotel. You can bring him there. Oh, ma'am, uh, we can take you to him. I've come this far, Mr. Cartwright. Now he has to come to me. so soon. You didn't expect me to finish in two hours, I hope. That ain't why I'm here, Will. You know, I used to always sneer at writers who wrote about the joy of work and nature. But after the day, I don't think I'll sneer anymore. <laughs> I'll throw rocks. Will, what I, what I came to tell you was your wife's in town. She wants to talk to you. Did you send for her? Certainly not. Don't lie to me. I ain't lying to you. I ain't never lied to you, have I? Come getting out of here. I'm taking that horse. Will. Will. You run if you must. But you ain't stealing my horse, you hear? Well, you ain't gonna stop me. I trusted you like I trusted her. And you both betrayed me. Well, I'm getting out of here. Go ahead, kill me. Will, I don't know what that woman done to you, but... Why don't you kill me? I'm begging you. You're a man. A man don't beg. <laughs> You're right. They don't surrender, either. I'm surprised he took your horse. That's a new low, even for Will. I don't rightly know what got into him, ma'am. He simply reverted to type. He ran. Well, the direction he headed up 
toward those mountains, there's only one town up there. A few Mexican families and a little cantina. We could be up there in no time. Did you tell Will that I was here? Yes, I did. And you don't have the heart to tell me it was that bad, wasn't it? Whatever he said was foul and violent, and then he left. He ran. Well, ma'am, it wasn't it that Will didn't want to face you. It was he can't face himself, don't you see? Well, I am tired of chasing after Will. I have followed Will through more dirty little towns than I can name. And for so long that it's, it's almost a habit. Well, well, habits can, can be broken. Ma'am, ma'am, I, I don't know what went on between you and Will, but... No. No, you do not. That's why you're willing to go after Will, to try to help him again. Well, I won't go after Will. I, I can't do it anymore. Oh! gave it to me on our fifth wedding anniversary. A golden brooch to match the golden light in your eyes, he said. So, you see, Hoss, things haven't always been like this with Will and me. But that time is over, and I'm going to forget about Will. And I advise you to do the same. Ma'am, can you do that that easy? Easy? I never said it was easy. Um, I, I have a lot of packing to do. Would you, would you excuse me, please? Yes, ma'am. plays like a fallen angel, doesn't he, my friend? They say Miguel was born with a guitar in his hand. Uh. <laughs> Talent is a curse. An albatross slung around the neck like the last banner of defeat. <laughs> it enhances the thirst, my friend. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? No, senor. My friend, of all the creatures in the world, man is the unhappiest. And yet you smile. Why? I enjoy being alive. Let's straight to that. Don't you think you've had enough, senor? There's never enough until there's oblivion to life. May it last forever. Yes, 
May it keep us all warm. Salud, señor. Would, would you mind if I lowered my head for a moment to rest my eyes? I feel suddenly quite ready to pull down the curtain. Señor! 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 Jesus, you in there? Estamos cerrados. We're all closed up. Jesus, it's me, Hoss Cartwright. Oh, Señor! Un minuto. Buenas noches, Miguel. Buenas noches, Hoss. First loony came to him. Is he a friend of yours, senor? Yeah, he's a friend. He stole my horse. There is a lot of sadness in this man. See how he sleeps like a baby. You want to take him home? No. Might as well let him sleep as long as he can. You got a place to keep him? See the back room? Good. If he wakes up before I get back, you keep him here, even if you have to hit him with a club, you hear? Don't worry, he won't wake up. Miguel, ayúdame. The bags are right over. I hate to bother you again, Miss Evans. But you found Will. Yes, sir. Did you tell him that I was leaving? Well, I couldn't. You see, he was asleep. He was drunk, wasn't he? Yes, sir. Well, why did you come here? Why couldn't you let me go in peace? Well, that's just it, ma'am. I figured if I let you leave now that you'd never know another minute's peace the rest of your life, because you still love him. Can a woman love insults? and threats and tantrums? No, ma, I reckon not, but she can love the good she finds in the man and try to help him. I have tried. What else can I do? Well, try once more. Do you think it's really worth another try? Isn't it always? We've come to help you, Will. <laughs> Aren't I lucky to have such a conscientious little mother? Yep. I'd say you were at that, Will. Well, look at her. Standing there, the, the symbol of martyrdom. 
and she glories in it. Don't you have anything to say to me, my love and keeper? <laughs> you see, she's dumb literally as well as figuratively. Well, I'm going to say something, Will. I'm getting pretty fed up with you picking this woman apart when all she's trying to do is... No. That's exactly what he wants. Someone to argue with. Someone to attack. No. Listen to the woman. It's the truth, Will. And you know it. This is the way you keep me from getting close to you, with ridicule and insults. Just so I won't see how frightened you are. Frightened? Me? Dear girl, and that's a charitable term if I ever heard one. I am William Warlock Evans, and I happen to possess a writing talent commonly acknowledged by all. And there's not one thing in this whole flaming world that frightens me. Except William Warlock Evans. She's talking in riddles. She's talking a lot of sense, Will. Oh. That's your considered opinion? Yeah. Yes, it is. And I'll tell you something else that's my considered opinion. No question about it, Will. You're a great writer. But you're something else, too. You're pathetic. Fire! Even a marionette has more guts than I do. Get him to the table. Come on, Will. Come on. can't fight it any longer, Will? Well, I can't fight it for you. So we'll forget that we are husband and wife and we'll be married to this. I can't pull you out of the gutter, so I'll just crawl right in with you. To William Warlock Evans and his memory. Lydia, no. Don't do that. You don't care what happens to yourself. What do you care what happens to me? For the rest of your life, Will, I'm going to be right with you. Glass for glass and bottle for bottle. I'm going to be a mirror that you can't escape. A twisted, warped image. What I've had to live with all these years. Why do I do this to you, Lydia? What, what kind of a man am I? you can call a man is a million years in one shape. Remember that, Will? Did you ever finish it? I can't finish it! Don't you understand that? I'm burned out. I'm a shell of an artist. Why can't you see that? Why can't you see it? That flame you had inside you, it's still there. You still got it. 
You're just too close to it, that's all. You really believe that, don't you? The whole world believes it, Will. That's what we're trying to tell you. Why? Why do you bother with me? After what I've done to you. Because I love you. It's as simple as that. Take my hand, Will. Maybe it's worth a try. Another try, Lydia. It always is. <laughs> 